left in high spirits to indulge in my hobby of bus surfing. Tom Campbell from Isolation Station 24601. That's now broken. Here is some wrestling news. WWE face major criticism after being classed as essential business. A superstar has responded to Jerry Lawler's commentary call from Monday Night Raw. And which WWE star saved Tyler Breeze from being fired and how? Tell you more in a bit. So what a wild and woolly four days it's been in WWE. Let's go all the way back to Friday, actually, where all of this started. WWE guys assembled for a taping of SmackDown. Vince McMahon making the decision, almost lastminute.com, to do it live! We'll do it live! Uh, Vince McMahon has decided that WWE shows will be live once again, as opposed to taping in blocks as they have been. Now, this comes after several visits uh, from local officers in Florida to try and shut down the performance center, claiming that it's not essential business. We saw Monday Night Raw live on Monday night as this system gets back to normal. And this comes after the governor of Florida has determined WWE to in fact be essential business. So Jack talks about this in the wrestling news yesterday. I uh, just want to update a few factoids that have come out since then. So it was during the Monday press conference that uh, Mayor Jerry Demings said that WWE is now considered essential per the governor's office, uh, Jerry being the Orange County mayor. Uh, Ron DeSantis said the following regarding WWE being an essential business. I think we need to support content, especially sports and events. Not saying they'll have a crowd there, but if NASCAR have a race and televise it without having a large crowd, I think that's a good thing. Uh, he also went on to compare WWE to Disney World and how whilst Disney is shut down, there are people that are still walking around the park, maintaining the flowers uh, and just general upkeep on the, on the rides and stuff. Are they allowed on the, on the rides themselves? Like, if they, uh, are they allowed just to jump on Space Mountain for a bit if they're socially distancing? Just point that out there. If you work at Disney, let me know. Uh, but they're being compared to companies like that. So it seems like there's been a 180 that is visible from space in terms of how WWE is deemed an essential business. So why has this happened? That's the question uh, that Florida's Spectrum News 13 wanted to find out. WWE's really been uh, in the news over the last 24 hours because of this, like in the actual news. The fact that my dad is calling me and saying, hey, have you heard about the old WWF being essential business? Hey, how are the bushwhackers doing? You know, I love my dad. And he, um, and, and he along, my dad, along with many other people, uh, are talking about how WWE is, should or shouldn't be classed as essential business. Spectrum News 13 did a deep dive into this. And uh, here's this is an interesting little thing that they found out. Um, this change of heart from Florida came around the same time as a pro-president Donald Trump super PAC, a political action committee, made the announcement they were going to be spending just under $20 million in both the Tampa and Orlando markets. So this super PAC headed up by the former head of Trump's small businesses uh, sector, and close friend, Linda McMahon, the wife of Vince McMahon. It was also on Tuesday that it was revealed that Vince McMahon is part of a body within Donald Trump's government now to help get the economy back up and running. He, was, he along with heads of major sporting bodies, are getting together uh, to discuss plans going forward. And Vince McMahon is part of that body right now. So. I, I mean, I'm not just connecting dots for the fun of it, but isn't it funny that this super PAC headed up by Linda McMahon uh, don't, uh, promised to spend money within the Florida market and now Florida have gone, actually, all that stuff we said about wrestling not being an essential business, we think it is now. So come on down, bring your wrestlers. Let's do a thing. This also means, though, that it's not just WWE that can get back to work if they so chose to. Other wrestling companies can now operate in Florida since wrestling is classed as essential business. 
sports entertainment and the like, classes, essential business in Florida, come one, come all. Uh, AEW uh, were operating out of Daly's Place in Jacksonville, Florida. They got shut down. They moved to Georgia, where they've been doing uh, big blocks of dynamite tapings that have taken them all the way up till the middle of May. If they wanted to now, they could presumably go back to Daly's Place. Carry on recording from there. They've got themselves a base there. Uh, a few other companies were reached out for comment regarding whether or not they would take advantage of uh, Florida relaxing the rules on wrestling during uh, the pandemic. Uh, Joe Koff from Ring of Honor said the following, I think it's great for WWE that they're able to operate how they see fit or how they may even need to for their business. It doesn't necessarily change our approach to the pandemic though. The safety of all of our performers, staff, vendors and fans are the most important thing to us right now and we are continuing to improve our infrastructure and find ways to connect with them during this time are we eager to get back absolutely for now though we'll be monitoring day by day court power from major league wrestling was a little bit more punctual he said no i will not put my athletes crew and staff along with their families at risk of contracting this pandemic based virus mm, okay simply no did the job. Uh, so we're not going to see those two guys, those two operations in Florida, but it certainly opens the doors for other companies if they want to get back to work to go and uh, take part in wrestling in Florida. WWE absolutely will be expect live episodes of Monday Night Raw, uh, NXT and Friday Night Smackdown, I guess from either the Performance Center or Full Sail until we see a time where things start to get back to normal. It won't just be wrestling that's coming out of the PC though. Uh, Bob Arum, legendary boxing promoter. This guy has an incredible back history when it comes to boxing. He is Mr. Boxing to a lot of people. And he is interested in running boxing events at the Performance Center in Orlando, Florida. Uh, ESPN uh, had a catch up with Bob. And Bob said that uh, he is very close with Vince and it's something that they're looking to do. Uh, they won't be talking properly until June, but it could very well be that we see boxing at the WWE Performance Center not before too long, which is a great time for the Brawl for All episode of Dark Side of the Ring to come out. That's perfect timing. Who'd have thought we'd see boxing in wrestling again? That's happening. Jerry Lawler's comments from Monday Night Raw have caused a bit of a stir. It was during the Austin Theory Akira Tozawa match when Tozawa hits a somersault senton off the apron, which Jerry Lawler referred to as a ramen noodle moonsault, which is problematic in a lot of ways. Um, I mean, it's not a moonsault. <laughs> it was a senton. It's a completely different move. Uh, and there's other problematic things about that sentence other than the uh, the actual technicality of it. Uh, NXT star Rachel Evers sent out a tweet that may very well have been connected to this particular episode. Uh, Rachel said, just a casual reminder that being a racist is not okay. Thanks for listening to my TED talk. Have a great night. Those are the words of Rachel Evers. Um, yeah, Jerry Lawler's comments uh, I, I think I'm very, very tone deaf. They weren't even that, they were very inaccurate. Like, wasn't a moonsault. Can we just remind ourselves that it wasn't a moonsault? It was a somersault sent on. And I just felt that Jerry Lawler on Raw was very, he was very ill-informed. Just, I got the impression that he was just pulling stuff out of his backside on commentary for most of Raw. During only Lorcan's match, like, the, the only real thing of substance he truly gave to that match was, oh, isn't Oni a funny surname? It's, it, I, it, it's been legendary that, that Jerry Lawler doesn't really prep for commentary. Like, Jim Ross has talked about this on Grilling JR on the podcast, where JR will, will prep for stuff, Jerry just kind of doesn't and wants to react to stuff, which is fine if you kind of have a base idea of who's who. And it's clear from Raw last night that he really didn't. And... You know, you'll have your opinions on, on the ramen noodle moonsault comment that Jerry Lawler made, and I'm sure you have your opinions on me having my opinions on it, and that's absolutely whatever. Uh, but the fact that WWE are going to the trouble of editing the comments out of the Hulu replay of Raw 
And chances are they'll take it out of the WWE Network replay of Raw. That says a lot about how WWE feel on it. And final amour for a Wednesday or more. Cesaro in the news today. Love talking about Cesaro. Genuinely one of the most underutilized talents. And Cody Rhodes said the same thing. He was on Twitter last night gushing about how brilliant Cesaro is. Called him a PWG version of Nikita Koloff. Which is actually, if you're a, if you're a wrestling historian like I am, that's a really great compliment to pay a guy. Um, but he was on the New Day's podcast and they were talking about a whole number of things. It was very much a Cesaro loving, which is always nice to hear. Uh, they talked about the beach ball incident where Cesaro went into the crowd. The crowd was passing around a beach ball and Cesaro, just off script, went into the crowd, grabbed the beach ball and tore it apart. Mwah. Love you for that, Cesaro. But they also talk about an incident involving Tyler Breeze at Florida Championship Wrestling. This is the development company for WWE long before NXT was a thing. Uh, Cesaro was down there and he was wrestling Tyler Breeze back when he was going under the name Mike Dalton. And it turns out that Tyler Breeze slash Mike Dalton was on the edge of being cut from the company. And it was this match with Cesaro that changed that. In particular, one move uh, in which Cesaro hit Breeze with an uppercut that, quote, knocked him back to 1922. And apparently, according to uh, what the New Day said and what others have said, Tyler Breeze sold the move so well that WWE went, actually, there's something with this guy. We should probably keep him on the books. So a massive thank you to Cesaro for keep letting us keep Tyler Breeze a little bit longer. Um, there is something to be said for this, right? And, and Bruce Pritchard mentioned this on Something to Wrestle With this past week as well. If you are going to send like highlights and highlight reels to wrestling companies, don't just send bits where you're doing brilliant moves. Send stuff where you're getting beaten up. Show him how you sell moves. Show him how you sell an uppercut. You never know. It could be the key that opens the door to be greeted by Cesaro with an uppercut. <laughs> Live your dream. Live your dream. Have a great Wednesday. Love you. Bye.